everyone. I'm going to talk to you about grading today. So when you did manual grading back in semester two, uh, you used what we call grade rules. So grade rules essentially are the amount you need to move in the X and Y direction to be able to increase or decrease the size of your pattern piece. So each pattern piece has cardinal points on it, which need to have those Cartesian points applied. So Cartesian um, graph is the X and Y, and the coordinates are the points that we're using. Now, in the computer system for Gerber, we also work with grade rules, and they're set up in a table. So I've got the Gerber Akimark Explorer open here, and I'm going to open up the grade rule table. So up here on the um, top left corner under the process tab, we've got grade rule and I'm going to double click on that and it should open up a dialog box, which is all about the grade rules. So when it opens, we'll have a look at it. Okay, here we go. So this is our dialog box with grade rules in it, or it will have whenever we've finished. So we need to set up a grade rule table if we're going to do grading. Um, depending on whether the company you're working for already has one set up. If they do, well, obviously that's something you won't have to worry about. Uh, we have one that we use at RMIT. So this is really just some background information to cover what a grade rule table is and how you develop it. So in the dialog box here, we've got comments, an area for comments. So we can put um, whatever we want in this area. It can be a bit of a description or an explanation of what the comments, uh, what the uh, details are in the grade rule table. So let's just call this one is grade rules. So uh, we're testing the way they're set up. With grade rules or grading, in fact, you can have numeric or you can have alpha numeric sizing. We'll stick with numeric because that's what we're familiar with. Our base size is the size that our sample is. So we'll put size 10 there. And the step size, well, we usually go from size 8 to size 10 to size 12, 14, and so forth. So that means that there's a two um, size step between each of the sizes. So I'm going to put two in there to cover the step size or the size of the step. The smallest size that we're going to work on can be size six, it can be a size eight, whatever we decide is our smaller side, size will um, reside in here. The next size breaks will be from size eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, maybe up to a size 18. You wouldn't want to go much higher than that in any one, um, one grading of a pattern because if you're going larger than that, the proportions generally start changing. So maybe a size range from 8 to, to 18. 16 is usually more the, the general, but you could stretch it to a size 18. So that's our, our first page of the rule table um, part of the software. And we can save it at this stage. So we can choose to save that. And we can call it whatever we want to call it. So it can be test grade rules. And We'll just save that. And 
the next thing we need to do is go to the second tab, open that up, and you'll see here there is essentially what is an Excel table working in the background. We've got here a, a double column, rule, we would put the rule number, and I'm going to start with um, rule number one, obvious place to start, and we'll call it um, a zero, zero rule, and that means that we put zero zero as an X move and a Y move. So once we've put that in we can actually just drag them down the same as we would in Excel. So click there, get that little handle happening whoop, and then drag down. So zero, zero, that's just um, something that we put in there. In case we need to add another rule, we can change this, or maybe we don't want anything to move at all at a certain point. So we'll leave this as zero, zero. And for this one, I'm going to imagine that I'm grading a skirt. So this will be the comment that I put in there. And that's just so that, uh, Anybody else using the rule table knows what rules I'm working with. So the next rule I'm going to put is an X and Y of zero and 0.3. And I'm just going to build up my rules based on all the combinations that I can think of that might possibly need may be attributed to a skirt. So it's not just the basic block that we're thinking of. This is any style of skirt that we could come across. And I'm going to build these up until I've finished the number of style points or rules that I require. So we can go on and we can actually, <clears throat> we can include other kinds of garments in our grade rule table as well. So we can have um, bodices, we can have sleeves, we can have any combination of garments, dresses, pants, whatever we want, we can put in here. So. It's quite a tedious process to set up. It's probably something that you won't have to do more than uh, once. Once you've got it there, it will be something that can be built upon unless you start running a different range of garments. So it might be that this one is for ladies wear. If you're doing children's wear at the company you're working for, you might find that you need to do a rule table for children's wear. If it's men's wear that you're working with, you might have to um, do a rule table for men's wear. So as you can see, I'm slowly building this up, adding all the different variations of combinations that I can think of with a zero in front of them. And then I'll go on and do a 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and a 0 0.6, 0 0.3, and a 0 0.3, 0 0.65, and so on, until I've completed the rule table. Once it's completed, we can save it, and we can pop it into any of our storage areas and work with it that way. So just again recapping, the X and the Y here are relating to the coordinates that we might possibly use for our grading on any style that we want to work on. Any um, rule table that you work on, 
<clears throat> can hold a substantial number of grade rules. I believe it's somewhere around the figure of 999. I could be mistaken, but um, maybe it's more than that. So as you can imagine, this is something that if you have to remember every grade rule when you're grading to put into um, a style, it would be quite uh, an onerous task. But that is one form of grading that you can do in Gerber. When you're digitising a pattern into the system, you can add grade rules to each point that you digitise in. So if you want to do it that way, you do need to have your rule table either memorised or handy for you to check so that you can digitise in the correct grade rule number. <clears throat> We will also be using grade rule tables for the other process that we um, are going to learn about for grading, which is edit delta. So I just wanted to show you what a grade rule table looks like, how it's built and the purpose of it, which is to give you the coordinates that are required for grading. Now, as I said, we already have one that we've established and we apply that grade rule table to the um, styles that we're working on and it will grade the system, will grade the um, pattern pieces for us. If you're using the digitising process, you can digitise grade rules in at the same time and then whenever you open up your um, digitised pattern piece, it will automatically be graded because you've applied the grade rules to it. The way we're working, trying to make it a little bit um, less onerous, is to have a rule table working in the background that will um, communicate with the system about how we want to grade. So just a bit of background information for today. You don't have to worry about it, uh, having to make one of these rule tables. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next one.